Well, today we're going to go out and we are going to play with the air compressor on the Lincoln Mark 8. I went out and pieced together this little test hose with a pressure gauge that goes up to 160 psi. We're going to find out what kind of pressure my compressor is putting out. The uh, service manual says it's got to be 130 psi minimum. The manufacturer tells me that it's a 150 max compressor. While we're doing this, we're also going to check to see if the existing solenoids that I've got on the car, this is a new one, if they're leaking or not. Are they leaking internally a little bit? I think that they probably are. I mean, they are almost 20 years old. And so this would be kind of a fun thing to do. And we're going to be using the, the Superstar 2 tester. We're going to do it on the right-hand wheel. And uh, it should be simple. See you at the car. Since I'm going to be letting the air out of the bag, and I didn't want to pull the tire off, I went ahead and threw a jack underneath it just to support it. And because uh, when we pull that air valve, air solenoid out, it's definitely going to want to drop. Okay, now I already disconnected the, the electrical to it. And I'm going to, I created these nifty little pliers to pull the air line off. I'll try to keep my hands out of the way of everything. It just kind of clips around the line. Allows me to push up on the valve and pull down on the hose at the same time. Which makes it real easy to disconnect it. The uh, electrical solenoid have, has got a little clip up here to hold it in place. I need to pry that off. I don't think I can do it with my hand. I think I have to get a screwdriver or something to get underneath it. Let's see if I can use my little pliers to do that. They're a little bit of a pain. They're easy to put on. A little bit of a pain to take off. But once they're off, they're off. Once I get it going, it'll be simple. There it goes. So that's, that's what keeps it from turning to come loose. should go now. There it goes. And just a little bit clip. That's all it is. Now I'm going to make sure my jack is tight. Okay. It's picking up the wheel. Now I'm going to rotate it one click. And then that's going to let me to allow it to slide out. It's going to let the air out of the bag. You'll hear it. And then now that it's empty, go ahead and pull it all the way around. And down it comes. Now the original solenoids look like this. The replacements look like this, which is the same as the rear. Um, they will clock in. The clocking is different, but there's not an issue with it. Okay, so I'm going to go hook this up to my new gauge, my new uh, tester. Be right back. It's a little chilly out there today. Okay, when I pulled the old valve out, let's see if we can get a close-up here on it to focus on my This one O-ring was sitting all the way at the bottom. It's hard to see the black on black. But I had noticed that on another one that I pulled out. And obviously when it was installed, it wasn't put in with any lube. And that larger O-ring, I don't know if you can tell this, this bottom O-ring is larger than the top one. Come on, focus. I'm not going to do it, is it? There we go. This bottom O-ring is, is larger than the top one. And this larger o-ring just slid all the way down to the bottom so it wasn't sealing it at all so that is something to really watch out for when you install the new ones because you can't feel it you don't know it and the only way you find out is when you pull it back out again so i'm going to go put this one in we're going to lube it up with somali coat o-ring lube get it in lock it in i'm going to pull it back out and make sure that one hasn't slid and i'll do it a second time I've got, 
got the valve on my tester. I'm going to go ahead and hook up the airline, hook up the power to it, and then we're going to go do some testing and see what the heck it does. Okay, well, I think I'm ready. I've got the trunk switch off. I've got the ignition in the run position. I've got my tester hooked up. I'm going to turn it on. We want test 214, 211, 12, 13, 14. Now when I put, punch it down, it will turn on the compressor and open this solenoid. It should get up to at least 130 PSI. about 145. Let's shut that off. Now I'm just going to let it sit here for about 10 minutes, see if it bleeds down. If it bleeds down, the solenoid is leaking internally. Looks like it's going to bleed down. We'll see how much more it goes. Well, as you can see, it's leaked down quite a bit. And while I've been waiting my 10 minutes, I used Snoop on all of my test fittings to make sure that they were all snug and there were no bubbles anywhere so it's definitely leaking internal to the switch itself now I'm going to go ahead and deflate it get the pressure off it I, I need the next test which is 215 and that should open it to vent and down it goes so electrically it's working fine, but internally it is leaking. So now we're going to go ahead and install the new one. Okay, I decided to add a little bit of light in here. It's a little dark. So this is the, Molly, the lube that I'm using, Molly Coat 55. It's an O-ring lube. Now I want this one to lock. Okay, so it's going to be that way, this way. That's going to hit the fork, so I'm going to flip this around over here. I want to go that way, which will throw the connector towards the back. Now I'm going to do this twice. I'm going to go slide it up. Okay, it's locked in. I'm going to pull it back out one more time to make sure that that big O-ring didn't move out of place for me. Yep, she looks good. Cleaned off some of my lube. Go back in. Slowly push, put pressure on it to slide her in. I want to double check that. Yeah, it's okay. It's just that last eighth of an inch. It's a real bare. There it is. And lock it in. I'm going to take the clip and I'm going to grab the back side of it. And then I'm going to let it come around to the front and lock. There we go. It's on. Go ahead and hook up the electrical. Kind of check this guy on the end of it because that's where it sits up against the o-ring looks pretty good and slide it in okay that's that now I need to go air up the strut I'm gonna go ahead and leave the jack underneath it for now and that will let the compressor give the well relieve the compressor a little bit so it doesn't have to do quite as much work trying to pick up the whole car Put that back on. And there we go. Same functional test, 214. Then we're going to let that start airing up. Now I did lower the jack just a little bit so we'll actually be able to see it starting to inflate. And that will take a little bit of time.
fill the bag. And we're listening to the beeps. When it goes solid, it will be at the trim height. But I may have to stop it so we don't get a timeout on the compressor. Okay, I got my tape measure. Let's see what we got here. I think I've got them set around 24. 24 and a quarter is what they like. Yeah, 24 and a quarter is right where it's at. That seems to be a, a happy spot for it. 24.2. This side should be the same, but we haven't touched it. Just a quick verification. 24.2. Okay, so that is that. Now that that's done, I've got a new tool to throw in my toolbox and never use again. But it's handy to have, and it's nice to know. Um, I, I'm glad I know now. I actually wasn't 145 PSI. I just looked like that from where I was standing. It's closer to 142, but close enough. It needs to be greater than 130. I uh, hope it helps. Found that I had definitely had a leaking valve, so I didn't waste money just buying a new one. Actually, I'm buying all four. Uh, only one came in. They, something happened with the order. If y'all have any questions, let me know. Hope it helps. And uh, take care.